Welcome to the third of eight videos from the UW 2021 Roman Army Lecture on combat. And in this third video, uh, I'll just say a little bit about tactics and formations, which all sounds very old school. Okay, so tactics and formations. What are we... Come on. Right. All right, so we, we talked about them all lined up, and uh, there's lots of sounds and smells and tastes. No, no, not taste, touches, and whatever. Uh, so a big part of it was the formations the Romans used, you know, some flexibility, and I gave you the generic battle order earlier. You can imagine also, besides exchange and missile fire, yelling, shouting, etc., might be some skirmishing, okay? And this is maybe with uh, small groups of soldiers come out and fight little things with uh, or against their foes and then return, and then other ones might come out and do this and return, and this might take place over a little, little period of time. Um, uh, and this is all in the context of the more tightly organized tactically armies. Okay, uh, I would say tactics. Like in a different video, I talked a bit about operations, strategy, and tactics, and we've sort of talked about strategy and grand strategy, and I've talked about operations, and this is tactics is now at the battle level. This is the art or science of deploying military and naval forces in order of battle. And of performing warlike evolutions and maneuvers. All goes down, goes back to Greek tasso or chato, order, arrange, deploy. Okay. So give you a sense of some of the, the order part of all this and the formations. Uh, so one kind of formation that's kind of important, we'll come back to in a second, is not here. Uh, but to give you a sense at least of how uh, ancient historians uh, get into some of this, we have Cassius style. For a long time, there was pushing shield against shield and thrusting with a sword. As they were at first cautiously looking for a chance to wound others without being wounded themselves, since they were as eager to save themselves as to slay their antagonists. But later, when their ardor increased and their rage was inflamed, they rushed together recklessly and paid no more attention to their own safety. But in their eagerness to destroy their adversaries would even throw away their own lives. Some cast away their shields and seizing hold of the foe facing them, choked them by means of their helmets while they struck them in the back or else tore away their armor and smote them on the breast. And when they came to close quarters, the soldiers of Severus held their shields, some in front of them and some above their heads so as to form a testudo. And in this manner, they approached the enemy. So first case, they're just so excited, off they go charging and they sort of, their formation breaks free and it all goes all right. Another case, here we have a... Uh, to pseudo that we're going to come back to. So Roman tactics. Those other things we can think about. You know how close together were they? Talked a bit about touch and how this could vary and change. You know if you're too close together and you can't move, it's bad. Although there are situations where it'd be okay. It's possible that the minimum the minimum amount of space between soldiers would be ninety centimeters. Uh, I am two some odd meters ish. Am I? I don't remember. Um, so, you know, here's one, here's another-ish, okay? So some space in between you, and, you know, if we were in person, we can whip out the scutum and you could see it, but it's, you know, it's a good size. Look at these Playmobil dudes. Oh, where are you, Playmobil dudes? It's a good part of their body, so that's going to take up a lot of space. Um, there could be a whole series of lines, one after another, possibly some gaps in between if you uh, well again if you're in person you can watch a clip from spartacus and see the original spartacus and see a sort of a checkerboard formation which i cannot show you but you remember this parquet floor is boston celtics anyway um so sort of like a block and then a space and a block and then a space and then a block and then etc okay um of different subunits uh, sometimes it might form a phalanx closely closely packed together uh projecting weapons out to stop horsey horses there is a you know something that illustrates something okay uh so some of the things that they might again there's a few things little formations they might use as well they might be in a wedge shape <laughs> in the, the case of the killer pizza slice um, heading towards someone then you have to like pierce through a line okay with soldiers arranged uh, going backwards they might use testudo, the tortoise, okay? And here you can see a tortoise, you know, often used uh, one attacking a city. There you can see the walls, evil days, well, evil days, the attacking the Romans, and there they are forming testudo to, to ward off missile fire. If you've ever played Rise in Xbox One, they if you form a mini studio in there. I remember it was a highlight. 
of uh, that game when I got it, and then children didn't play. Uh, but I made one. Thinking of children, a couple weeks ago, look, my pinwheel dudes kind of made a little testudo. Uh, maybe their their hands are a bit mixed up. They should all be holding it with their right hand, but, you know, can't win them all. So they might have formation to sort of hold the stuff away, and even though these guys are like, well, we don't care about your heads, um, faces, uh, they might make something like a hedgehog. So you can imagine a group of guys with all sorts of spears sticking out in various directions, Um but another thing is a lot of this stuff shows, you know, legionaries, and a lot of times you read, like, the Battle of Mons Graupius in Agricola by Tacitus. Auxiliaries do a lot of stuff, and they maybe have a slightly different way of approaching battle. Okay. Uh, right. Now, if we're thinking of more about for kind of formations that um, soldiers might use, Romans might use, um, Vigidius, who's one of these... Again, authors of a military manual. Some people would say of dubious value, although as an intellectual artifact, important, etc. Vigidius gives seven modes for engaging in pitch combat. He says a rectangular formation, okay, with an extended front. The front is a bit longer than maybe the rest. An oblique one, a letter A, as he calls it, which is a bit like um, the wedge I told you about. If you have the guys lined up. Um, one a bit like two with the left, the L part maybe reinforced, you know, on the sides. Um, a spur, a way to one which spurs both wings forward. So you have your middle part and then the other with the wings sort of at the front, kind of making like a U shape. And then you might have one like four, but with maybe if you have the main group in the middle and the cavalry or whatever, or the wings a bit further forward, you might have light infantry in the center. You might have one that's oblique with emphasis on the right wing. So maybe the right wing is further forward and the left one holds back. Um, and then terrain um, with cavalry light on the unprotected side to help. So there's a few options. This is the Gideon's view. This seems, you know, reasonably legit. And so one of the things, you have things like this from Vigidius. You know, we have illustrations of things like Testudos. We have illustrations of closely matched, match, um, uh, closely um, position soldiers and we might know the name technical names of some formations and maneuvers that they used you know heading to battle moving around on the field but um, you know the, the literary authors they don't the ones who provide these narratives they don't include these kinds of details all the time anyway so there's a little bit on tactics and formations there's so much more um, this is just like a a teaser the end